Okay, so hello everyone, my name is Michael Buckert from the UKP lab in Darmstadt, Germany, and I will present our work called Breaking the Subtopic Barrier in Cross-Document Event Co-Reference Resolution. Let's get started. So what is Cross-Document Event Co-Reference Resolution? Uh, it is an NLP task which is performed on a collection of documents and it has two basic steps. So the first step is we want to find all mentions of events throughout these documents. What is an event? Uh, an event is an action which takes place at a certain time and location and has certain participants. And we want to find mentions of events like these. Uh, the second step is then to take all these mentions and to cluster them together so that every cluster um, refers to the same event. Every cluster of mentions refers to the same event. So here's an example. Uh, we have three documents here. Uh, and the first one starts with King decided to fire O'Brien and so fire is the action of the event mention King is a participant and O'Brien is also a participant and this whole event mention refers to the O'Brien fired event. In the second document we have uh, the Philly Sixers canned Jim O'Brien which is also a reference to the same event but well phrased a bit differently and in a third document, we will have a third mention on the same event, which is uh, Jim O'Brien was relieved of his duties. Uh, yeah, so these are the two tasks. We identified the mentions and we clustered them together to um, find these two events here in these three documents, which are present. Right, so this task, I would say, is not that useful on its own, um, but it can be quite helpful in downstream tasks. So. For example, for question answering, multi-document summarization, or information retrieval, it is quite useful to know how documents are connected to each other. And if we can find um, documents which relate to, well, if we take this first document and we can find the second and the third document um, based on this cross-document co-reference, then we have gained a lot because we can extract more information for, well, question answering uh, and so on. Right. Um, second important part about this task is that it's quite difficult in terms of NLP tasks. So um, the reason is that it depends on quite a lot of other tasks. So to properly perform this task well, we need temporal inference, we need spatial inference. Um, we could use entity linking to know who these people are. Um, we could use semantic role labeling to connect all these parts in the sentence and so on. And all these subtasks are not really solved yet at this point. So um, with cross-document event co-reference being at the top of all these tasks, it's quite, uh, quite difficult to get it to work properly. Uh, second of all, it's also computationally complex. So a typical approach for this task is a mention pair approach. So one represents individual mentions as vectors, and then one computes pairwise distances between all mentions. Um, to have a basis for clustering later on. And, well, if we have to compute distances between all pairs, then in terms of big O notation, that's O n squared. So, yeah, the effort that we have to take to solve the task, um, yeah, rises quadratically with the number of mentions that we have in our documents. Right, so, uh, our title of the paper was Breaking the Subtopic Barrier. So what is the subtopic barrier? Um, to tell you about that, we first need to take a look at the usual structure that corpora have for this task. So typically corpora are structured in topics and subtopics. For example, we may, may have a topic called announcing to run for presidency, and then we have two uh, subtopics with concrete examples of this topic, of this event type here. So for example, we could have Clinton runs for president in 2016 and Biden runs for president in 2020. And for each of those subtopics, we would have documents which primarily report about Biden running for president. So, and as we've seen before, inside these documents, we would find event mentions. And now we can have several different types of event co-reference link. We can have within document event co-reference, we can have cross document event co-reference links. And what we also could have is this. So this is what we call a cross doc cross subtopic event co-reference link. And um, I would say in terms of usefulness for downstream tasks, this one is particularly useful. So to say within this example of uh, Clinton running for president in 2016, 
So assuming there's a there's an event that um, influenced both Biden and Clinton running for president, maybe it was Clinton's email affair, I don't know. Um, it would be very useful to um, tell downstream downstream tasks about this connection between these two documents, um, so that we can retrieve more information and so on. So, yeah, as I said, this is what we call a cross subtopic event co reference link, uh, which is highly useful. But the big problem then is that in the ESB plus corpus, which is the largest corpus on this task, uh, only one percent of all cross document event co reference links are of this type. So this means currently we have uh, we are in a situation where we have nearly no data on this phenomenon, and we cannot train systems on this. We cannot test systems for this if they're good at resolving these links. Um, we just can't work on it at all. So yeah, this is the the issue we're facing right now. So you might be wondering now, okay, why one percent? How how does this happen? And there are two reasons for this. So the first reason is. Um, cross subtopic links are quite rare in general. So um, throughout documents, they appear not that frequently. So to annotate a corpus with many of these links, we would have to annotate a lot of documents. Um, but connected to this first problem is that um, current state of the art annotation schemes need trained expert annotators, and they also need quite long and complex annotation guidelines. So it's not uncommon to have 20 plus um, pages of guidelines telling people how to mark things uh, and so on to annotate the corpus properly. And so in combination, this means that the annotation of these links is simply not economically viable at this point uh, with the current annotation schemes that we have. So, well, the question then is clear. So how can we annotate a corpus with many of these links, but how can we do it in an affordable and scalable manner? Right, so this is what we tackled in our work. And yeah, I will run you through the ideas that we had um, and yeah, how we, how we approached the issue. So um, our first idea was to switch from token level to sentence level mention span annotation. So in the examples that we've seen before, um, participants, actions, times, and so on, were all annotated on the token level. And while this is very precise, it also takes a lot of time and it's also a cause for disagreement between annotators. So we instead decided to move to sentence level. Um, basically annotators only annotate full sentences with events. Um, this makes the whole annotation process a lot faster as well. The second step that we took was to replace trained expert, annota trained expert annotators with crowd workers. So untrained workers you can just find on the internet, basically. Um, and we also replace the guidelines with common sense and wisdom of the crowd, kind of. So what happens instead of the traditional annotation is that every document is annotated by multiple crowd workers. Uh, we take their annotations, we aggregate them together in one gold standard, and this is the result then of the annotation. So I have a screenshot here of our annotation interface to show you roughly what annotators were, were shown here. Um, so we see uh, in the middle here is the document that annotators are supposed to annotate. We have individual sentences and to the right of each sentence um, is the annotation interface. So the buttons and so on, they need to click. So for example, in this sentence, um, which says, in that respect, the game against Panama was a valuable lesson. We ask annotators whether um, a certain part of the FIFA World Cup 2018 is mentioned, so the overarching event. Uh, if yes, then we ask them to specifically mark the events that are mentioned in the sentence. And yeah, so in this case, it's just England versus Panama, um, and that's basically how the whole annotation worked. Right, yeah, and it, overall, this gives us a fast and scalable annotation approach in return. So as you might have guessed from the uh, screenshot of the interface, we worked a bit on sports news data. So overall, we used this approach to uh, create the so-called football co-reference corpus. I have a table with some statistics here. So FCC is our corpus. Uh, ECB plus is the corpus that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's also a corpus called GVC, gun violence corpus, um, with events on gun violence and all sorts. 
So uh, in terms of comparison, so we annotate on sentence level, as I've mentioned, we annotated with the crowd, the other corpora were annotated with experts, and ours was therefore annotated a bit quicker. Uh, we have 451 documents, plenty of sentences, only one topic, um, football, this is fine, so other corpora, um, other corpora have done it as well this way. Um, yeah, and then down here we have an overview of the events that are annotated in all of these corpora. And well, you might notice that these numbers are lower in our corpus compared to the other corpora, but that's not really important here. The important bit is down here, which is the number of cross subtopic clusters. So the ones we are we we went for. So we didn't want to beat these numbers. We wanted to focus on this. Um, and here we managed to annotate 142 uh, cross subtopic event clusters, which should give plenty of uh, plenty of material for systems to train and uh, test on. Right. So up to this point you basically had to trust me that this all works and that the annotation quality is sufficient to uh, work with it, but I have some plots for you uh, to prove my point. So um, coming back to crowdsourcing, so what usually is necessary is that um, we need we need multiple crowd workers to work on the same data instances because a single crowd worker is not that reliable they make mistakes they may be lazy they are tired i don't know um, so you mostly need to um, have multiple workers work on the same instance so the question is how many crowd workers do we need to get reliable annotation results and how do these workers compare to nlp experts on the same annotation task so here's a plot showing you that. So what we did was we took three random documents and we let NLP experts annotate these three documents. And um, afterwards we took eight, between eight and nine crowd workers and let them annotate the same documents. And based on this data, we could do uh, a lot of simulation work. Now, what simulation did we do? Well, we have between eight and nine crowd worker annotations. And so for this, what you see here in the leftmost column is we sampled two random annotators for each instance, aggregated their results into a gold standard, and then compared that to what the NLP experts had annotated. And yeah, if we do this 100 times, then we will sample different types, uh, different crowd workers, and we will get a nice probability distribution of the um, Krippendorf's alpha inter-annotator agreement to experts. And so what we see here is that um, as one would expect, the more crowd workers we use, the better the agreement to experts becomes. Um, but it also plateaus towards, well, five, six, seven, eight annotators. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. So uh, what we did was we decided to annotate uh, the full corpus with five crowd annotators per instance, because it gives us a nice trade-off between quality uh, and also costs. Right, and so this overall, this gives us 0.7 Krippendorf's alpha. Um, in comparison, usually the threshold where one would say it's good agreement is 0.8, but um, for a hard task like this one and for crowdsourced data, we think that 0.7 is, is really good in comparison. Right, so um, I still have some examples on annotated data. So here we see uh, two sentences taken from different documents. So the first, um, the first sentence here is taken from a document reporting about the match Croatia versus Denmark, and it says, awaiting Saturday, a quarterfinal date with the Russian hosts in Sochi. And what crowd workers annotated was the match Croatia versus Russia. Uh, in the second one, we have a special case. Um, here, the annotators marked three previous matches, actually with the three matches that were being played. Um, so the crowd workers went through the effort of looking through the events and assigning those manually. And that's a really cool result, we think, because usually with, um, uh, with trained expert annotators and long guidelines, this causes a lot of headaches. So usually these cases are not included or they are um, not covered that well, but because we rely on common sense and because we had diligent crowd workers in our case, um, we got all these, all these effects here, all these different things annotated for free which is nice. So to conclude, um, what have we learned? So cross-document event co-reference resolution is a hard NLP task, uh, both in terms of resolution by systems and also for data annotation. 
Uh, and also we found that existing annotation schemes are not fit for annotating all types of cross-document coreference links. So in particular, cross-subtopic event coreference links are um, too expensive to annotate with existing approaches. And yeah, to improve over that situation, we propose a, a novel, reliable annotation scheme, uh, which we then use to create the football coreference corpus. Right, so I hope uh, I got you interested in our work. Uh, if you want, please download our corpus and try it out. Uh, yeah, and at this point, I'm happy to answer your questions, I presume, in the chat. Thanks.